Well, for the second time in five days, these two teams, the PBA Sailfish and the Tampa Spartans, going head-to-head -head in what is the last home match for the PBA Sailfish. Last game, a 3-0 sweep for Tampa. I'm Jordan Little on the call with Trey Rooks here. Trey, yesterday you saw the game, PBA playing Eckerd last night, and the things didn't go, quite go the Sailfish's way. What do you think they need to do differently as they head into this match against the number four team in the country, the Tampa Spartans? Yeah, man, this will be a tough match all around. I mean... Eckerd was also nationally ranked, so hope they've been giving a lot of other players opportunity to play, which is great. So hopefully they can just find a rhythm today with the player, the starting lineup tonight, and get in a rhythm to maybe take away a few sets and maybe even beat the Tampa Bay. Yeah, this is a big opportunity there to to end the season strong for Palm Beach Atlantic, who comes into the match 12 and 15 on the season, six and 11 in the conference on the other side for the Spartans. Like I said, number four team in the country, 23 and three. Overall, 13-3 and in the SSC, but they're coming off to a loss against Barry last night, and that was one of one of the crazier games I've seen just looking at the stat line. Listen to this, Trey. One of Barry's players, one of the best players in the country, 42 kills on 96 total attacks in that game alone. 96 attacks in one game. That is, I got sore just looking at that stat line. Right. I can't imagine. A lot of hard work from both sides. We are ready to get things going. Number nine, Zoe Saput will start things off here in Rubin Arena. Good rally to start off this match as I jinxed it there, I guess. A violation, double contact call on the Sailfish. First point to the Spartans. And a player you got to look out for, Jordan, here is number 15, Callie Kors, a freshman for the Spartans has 278 kills on the year, Jordan. And our best player that has the uh, most attacks is Abby Zosher, another freshman. So the freshman has just been eating it up this year in the SSC. Lots of great young players as Tampa gets the first two points of the match. See here, they got oh. sent back, unable to get through the block. Good replay there from the net cam. PBA looking for a touch on that hit. 
Nothing called. And Tampa starts off this match on a 3 nothing scoring run. And Kaylee Ammons has been dominant lately on that front line as her and Jane have built a great chemistry doing wraparound back sets all night long yesterday and all season long. And they've been great, so hopefully they can find that tonight. And a quick timeout here in Rubin Arena as PBA down by four here early on. We'll take a quick break, break, quick break with them and we'll be right back here on the Sailfish Sports Network. University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. 4 nothing to score here. As PBA desperately needs to get something going. That one pushed back by the Tampa blockers in the middle. And not a great start if you're the Sailfish. Not necessarily, and that's a, that's a tough spot if you're Jaden as the setter coming all the way over trying to bump it in the middle just to get it over and then it goes right over the net just for Tampa to pound it down. Curbelo again, those blockers from Tampa causing problems early on. Mackenzie Dufresne. One of those blockers, she's been a force in the middle for the Spartans, a junior out of Tarpon Springs. Third in the country in hitting percentage and sixth in blocks. So look for her to play a major factor in this one as PBA really out of sync and out of system. Down by seven, yet to score a point here in the first set. Saput continues to serve, has been serving for the entirety of the match. Off the tape, nice dig by Matthews. Finally got a touch on that one, Jordan. Took eight points to get on the board, but 7-1 the score. We'll see if PBA can get a spark here now as Lauren Cummings goes back to serve. One of the leaders in the conference and aces coming in with 36, which puts her in third overall. That's a great stat and great serve by her right there. And a great hit by number eight, Natalie Perez. Third on the team in kills with 210, a freshman out of Honduras. That was ridiculous, dude. She just elevated on that one. Tampa with a lot of really good hitters, a lot of players who can get it done. Not necessarily one player that they have to turn to every game. It's not going to be really hard to defend when you have four, four or five people who can really move the needle for them. Receiving error there makes it 9-1, to one, Tampa. That was a tough serve to get up, and she did, and just hit the rafters and came immediately back down. That's number 15, Callie Kors serving. As you mentioned, their leader in kills with 278. And she's actually first in the conference in aces with 45. Coming from the back row, just long. That's not usually like her to be hitting from the back row, but hey, I'd like to see it, honestly. Yeah, Cummings, a defensive specialist out of Elgin, Illinois, a sophomore. Cores will serve again. Nice back set on the tip over from Perez. Cummings again from the back row. That time gets a good swing on it off the Jumbotron. And we continue in play here. Ammon slides over, but that's sent back by a host of Tampa blockers. Number 10, Tess Schrenger. And number 20, Tatiana Lyons on that one. Hopefully that rally built some confidence, though, as that was just good rally all around, and that back set slide was looking good, and blockers got up too high. That's the third block for the Spartans already. 11-1 the score. 
Man, that serve is ridiculous. Jordan has it just knuckleballs through the air. Perez goes up, but this time it's sent back by PBA. Number 13, Angelishka Curbelo getting PBA in the block column as well. Curbelo, a graduate student from Puerto Rico, transferring over from St. Peter's. And Stranger, excuse me, yes, Stranger, showing off why she's second on the team in kills. She has 233, Jordan. Make it 234 on the season now. Great timing there from the Spartans. As, they, as you said, Schrenger, 233 kills coming into the match. Second on the team in a lot of categories, including kills, digs, and aces. So a very well-rounded player is Tess Schrenger. And she just got up on that one and just sent that right down in the middle of our zone. Overpass. Amage just sends a free ball up and out of play. And Tampa... 15 points into, the, into this match, showing why they're number four in the country, Trey. Seriously, PBA just not getting a real good rhythm right now, but hey, hopefully can get up and side out real quick right here. They need some kind of spark as they just seem a little bit lost here. Caleb Matthews trying to give it to him. Dug out by J.J. Ramirez. Sneaky little second hit by Jaden. Wow, what a shot by Natalie Perez. That was a tough angle, cutting it down off the tape and finding the spot. She's been looking good already here early on. Her second kill of the match, excuse me, third kill of the match in five attacks. And Claudia Rivera still serving for the Spartans as the sneaky little bump serves that barely get over are tough to receive for PBA right now. She's so good at it as she did it again. That time, Kayla Matthews able to get the kill. One of the better offensive possessions for the Sailfish. One of the cleaner attacks for them as they are trying to dig themselves out of a 14-3 deficit. Timing there off the hands of Rivera. Schrenger goes wide out of play as PBA able to get two points in a row. Haven't been able to do that yet, but now bringing the lead down to 10, trying to cut into it, will be Kaylee Ammons back to serve. She's been very good for the Sailfish in her first year in the program. Gregerson gets up to block that. It's saved, but on the other side of the net, so point to the Spartans. Yeah, that's a tough break right there for PBS. They almost had it and just one bad miss hit. Serving now number one, Emily No. Friedenberg long set over to Matthews. Again, not able to handle the off speed is PBA. Tampa. Attacking in a lot of different ways. They can do it from the back line. They can do it from the middle. They can do it from the outside. That's what makes them so dangerous. And they just get everything up, Jordan. Absolutely. An Angelishka and Kill have been pounding it, and they just gotten all of them up. Except for that one. Except for that one. The kill by Angelishka Curbelo, as you mentioned. She has great power from the side or back row. doesn't matter. Jaden Otto, the setter. Grad student from Crystal Lake, Illinois, transferring over from Eastern Michigan. Quick set, but that one goes wide as well. Mackenzie Dufresne. Dufresne, one of the most efficient hitters, not just in the not just in the conference, but in the entire country. Coming in third overall in all of D2 in hitting percentage with a 456 clip. The lead now down within single digits as it's 16-7 PBA, or excuse me, 16-7 Tampa. Attacking air there from Schrenger. Jaden has been great at serving this year. And right on cue, gets another ace. She came into the season, or this game with 28 on the season, so she's been very efficient for PBA. 
Those 28 aces, good for third on the team behind Ammons and Cummings. Serve again, causing problems. Overpass there and a violation. We'll send the point to PBA as they've been able to get a little bit going here lately on a 5-0 scoring run. And that'll take Coach uh, Chris Katnack, or excuse me, Katnack for Tampa to call a timeout as it is a 9-16 ball game here in Rubin Arena. We'll take a quick break with them and be right back here on the Selfish Sports Network. Do you want Selfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. The biggest message today is don't change. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. A 5 nothing run for Palm Beach Atlantic has them back within seven in this first set. Jaden Otto serving from the back line has been causing a couple problems for Tampa. We'll see if that continues. Just outside the line. That was very close. But referee saw a little space between the gray line. So PBA in double digits now with 10. That, yeah, and it looks like Stringer's just been off the mark with their last two hits as they both have missed. And Kayla Matthews that time will get the kill as PBA responding well from an early deficit. They got down by 7 nothing early and now able to fight back to within five. Yeah, and that was just a nice little touch hit wasn't hit too hard didn't use all the power she has but hey Jay Nada did her job well and that one just barely missed Tampa will definitely take that as they end the scoring drought Sailfish Jack entering the arena now we'll see if maybe our mascot can bring some good luck it looks like he's off to a good start superstition Sailfish. says keep him in <laughs> Sailfish Jack our trusty mascot <laughs> trying to rile up the crowd here on what is a homecoming game for PBA. It's a little bit of a weird day for a homecoming event, but the original date got sent or got postponed with the Hurricane Ian. So November, what is it, November 5th, the new homecoming day as Curbelo tries to get the kill. And the point will be credited to Palm Beach Atlantic as 17-13 the score. Credit to the Sailfish for staying in this one. It looked like they took the first punch right to the mouth, but answering well off the tape and down for an ace. Kayla Matthews will get the second service ace of the game for the Sailfish. Let's do that again, Kayla. 9-1 scoring run. Only a three-point deficit which is ridiculous considering where they came back from. Yeah, I doubt very many people saw this one coming. Make it a two-point deficit now. Palm Beach Atlantic continuing to crawl back. And it looks like the Spartans are a little out of, out of rhythm as their top three hitters have just all missed a mark on their last attacks. Yeah, outside of Natalie Perez, Spartans not extremely efficient in this first set. Speaking of extremely efficient, there is Natalie Perez, her fourth kill. And like I said earlier, they have so many good players that when one player is down, another one can always pick them back up. For There's sure, they have three players in the 200s of kills, which is ridiculous. A 
kill will go to Palm Beach Atlantic as they are now within two again. Nice work by Anna Gregerson in the front just to pound that one down on that quick set from Jaden. That one blocked out of play by number 23, Alicia Kowalski. Excuse me, she was the one that had the last kill, not Natalie Perez. So Kowalski coming in and getting some good work in for the Spartans. Kowalski with two kills and Perez still with her three. Friedenberg sends a free ball over. That one finds the line. Nice kill. As the Spartans keep PBA at arm's length. Five points away from taking the first set. Saput will serve. Another free ball over from Breedenburg as the Palm Beach Atlantic out of system a little bit. Quick set, not executed there. Tried to go quickly to Lions. The timing just not quite right. Looks like the set just wasn't high enough. She smashed that right in the net. Tampa runs a little bit of a two-setter system, so number one, Emily No, and number nine, Zoe Saput, will both be in the setting positions for the Spartans as coming serve is outside the lines. Four-point deficit and four points away for Tampa. Good up by Lauren on that one. That was a nice dig to keep this rally going. Saput to Schrenger. Ammons on the quick set and she puts it down. Great find by Ammons to put it down in that back right corner, the soft spot of that defensive zone by the Spartans. Otto goes right to the middle and Ammons finds the back space to let Curbelo serve. Down by three. That chemistry is showing right there in that front line by PBA. Ammons with the block that time. Schrenger tries again, and that time she succeeds. She definitely didn't miss that one. Schrenger's been working hard early. Already up to 11 total attacks. Three kills. Claudia Rivera. Short serve, dug out by Cummings. Auto near side to Matthews. Point, Palm Beach Atlantic. Selfish still not going away. And if you take away their really slow start, these last couple of points have been really good for both teams. A little bit more of rallies, a little bit longer rallies, and Matthews, Rivera unable to stab that one out. Another nice dig from Cummings. She's playing well here in the first set. Matthews up off the block and gets the kill. PBA within two again. Like you said, defensive specialist, Lauren Cummings. That was great. Those good digs allowing PBA to get in system a little bit more as they've settled in. Took a little bit, but that was Stranger off speed. PBA a little bit slow to rotate. That will bring back in number one, Emily No, to serve one of the two setters that we talked about early on. This one, a little bit more of a fight than we expected here early on. 23-20 the score. Both teams talking things over and seeing if they can end this Tampa within two of taking set number one. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us. us to intervene. 
because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Palm Beach Atlantic battling back from a very slow start here in, first, in the first set. But Tampa has him on the ropes, 23-20. Emily No serves. Matthews goes right down the line. She's been getting things going here lately, Trey. That's her fifth kill. On eight attacks, hitting 625. That's ridiculous, dude. And she came into the season or the, into this game with 230, and she just displays so much power on that front line. She's been literally killing it lately. Absolutely, she's been playing very well in the last couple of weeks. As Gregerson sends it back, a little bit of a discrepancy there. It seems like Tampa wanted them to call a violation for going over the net, but nothing called as a discussion with Coach. Chris Katnack and the down referee continues. It looks like the head ref coming off his stand. I think his whistle fell off, mm -hmm. but thought he was going to come over and talk in person, but it was just a equipment malfunction, and we'll get right back in action there. So did I. I thought that was going to be a bigger deal <laughs> than it was. I don't know. Did he, did he wipe that whistle off at least? I don't Let's know hope. Let's hope. Uh, maybe some disinfectant over there on the stand, but... Mary Morgan Formby ties this thing up at 23 apiece as a timeout will be called. What a comeback from Palm Beach Atlantic, but the work is not done yet. 23-20 to score, first to 25. We'll take the first set. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Buses who are Sailfish teams turn to you for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Trey, it's only been... 46 points, but this back and forth has felt like a full couple of a full match, honestly, with the yes. way that this one's been going back and forth. Palm Beach Atlantic started off very slow, struggled to get things going, but here we are, all knotted up. Really nice kill. That time again, Kowalski showing off her athleticism, and Tampa now one point away. Yeah, that's too bad because Jaden Otto is the one that started the run for them the last time she was serving, so hoping she could do it again. But uh, Just lucky to get back over for Palm Beach Atlantic. As uh, a little bit of a missed pass there. Out of system. And PBA just barely staying alive now. We'll see if Matthews can square things up again. That was a good rebound touch by her. Helter Skelter here. Neither team giving up. And it looks like an inadvertent whistle is called after all that, Trey. That's ridiculous, dude. An inadvertent whistle. That ball was saved by PBA. But the ref a little bit anxious. How did that get up, Jordan? <laughs> that was a crazy Is that play. a kick save? 
I feel like it had to end up that way just because both teams needed a break. What a, right. what a back and forth. That one much quicker, Mary Morgan for me, keeping the sailfish alive. They were able to get that one down quickly as Coach Chris Katnack is not happy. Yeah, he's fuming over there. Yeah, he has a legitimate argument to be made after, after that inadvertent whistle, but nonetheless, lead back to the Spartans. That's a tough break right there. Yeah, both teams trying to calm down a little bit after a couple of crazy plays. Duf Dufresne serves. Curbelo near side. And that one is, that one will end it, excuse me. It's hard to tell there are a couple of players blocking the frame, but 26-24 the score in first set. What a, what a set that was. Hopefully we have a couple more like that as PBA battled back. But in the end, Tampa coming away with the first set. We'll be right back here in a couple minutes after we take a, couple, after we take a look at that replay. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Welcome back to set number two here. About to get going. We'll go over some stats from that opening set for Tampa. Tess Stringer leading the way in kills with four on 14 attacks. Natalie Perez has had three kills on six attacks. And Kowalski doing well as well coming off the bench with three. She's three for three hitting perfectly so far. And on the Palm Beach Atlantic side, Kayla Matthews. Pacing the sailfish with five, Angeliska Curbelo with three, and Anna Gregerson two for two as well. So 26-24 was the score in that first set. Very back and forth, and hopefully more of the same. This game, a very big one for the Spartans as they're battling out for the number one seed in the SSC with Barry and Lynn close behind with 12 and four overall in the, in the conference, Tampa 13 and three and Barry 14 and two. So this, this game does have big implications for the Spartans. We're underway here. And that was a quick kill from Tatiana Lyons in the middle, starting yeah. off set number two. They mean business. That Tampa does mean quick. business. That was a very quick one. They've been all business for the last 39 years with Coach Chris Katnack. 
He's in his 39th season with four national titles, including two of the last three, Trey. So That's success crazy. all throughout that program. His total, his record in his time at Tampa, 1,168 total wins. So, 1,000 wins is insane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have 23 on just this year, so 39 years of just dominance. dominant performance yep. is ridiculous. PBA able to get on the board there. Good spot by Mary Morgan just to pound that right back down as she basically got set by the Spartans. The overpass leading to the point and Lauren Cummings to serve. That is number 10, Tess Schrenger, continuing her good start to the day with authority on that kill. And I thought that was an impressive set by Zoe Sep Sepput to get that off the net like that. Rivera, the libero. Otto to Cummings in the back row. That one too strong. It's been tough sledding out of the back row for some of the sailfish attackers, but still looking to get in that rhythm. It's kind of cool to see some people that don't usually hit swing like that from the back row. Build some confidence hopefully going forward. Violation on PBA point to Tampa. And again, another slow start for the Sailfish. They're already down five to one. Hammond's on the slide. Kill from Perez again. Her fourth. That was just nice all around offense right there by the Spartans. Tampa with a lot of really good athletes, you can tell. They're getting a lot of good elevation, jumping really high and getting that angle to get a lot of velocity on their kills. Speaking of a lot of velocity, Abby Zilstra, her first kill of the match, leading the team in kills coming in. With, with 250, yeah, Jordan. 250, the freshman out of Hudsonville, Michigan. That time just long on the serve. Velocity carried over. <laughs> Got to find a way to, way to dial it back in. Fourth service error for PBA. You, when you're playing a team like Tampa, you can't afford to give free points to them as they make you pay the way it is already. Tough one from Dufresne there. Kind of backhands it over. That was a sneaky little second touch set over the net. That's what makes her so good, so efficient, able to attack in a number of different ways. Overpass again. Violation called against Jaden Otto. Looks like she was trying to keep it away from them and set it back to our players, but a little bit, go our way. Yeah, a little too far over the net, seems like. No serving over. Ammons again on the slide. Rivera sets up Schranger. Schranger's been using that roll shot a lot. PBA calling for a touch, but won't get it. As again, Tampa coming out strong, 10-2 to two the score in the second set. They haven't been able to carry over any momentum 
from their first set comeback. Out of system, but somehow gets it back over the net. Schranger, she's been going with the roll shot. That time she went all power. Coach Walters will take a timeout as PBA, again, will need to dig themselves out of a big hole. Down by nine. I don't just want to know, I want to see, feel, experience for myself. I know I have what it takes to make an impact, resilience, drive. I chose a school that shows what a beautiful life, a beautiful faith, a beautiful community looks like. Because we were chosen for this. Tampa is taking the last five points. PBA needs an answer. And they'll get it. The block by the sailfish. Makes this one three. PBA three, Tampa 11. As Kaylee Ammons will serve, one of the better servers for the fish. No back set. Number 23, Kowalski, and she's been playing very well. She has four kills already on six attacks. Yeah, she hammered that one all the way down. Blocked out of play. Point PBA. Matthews credited with the kill. Matthews leading the way with six. We'll see if auto serve can spark another PBA run. Doesn't look like that will be the case, at least for now. Breedenberg unable to handle that tough kill. Yeah, that ball was hammered so hard, Jordan. Callie Coors gets the kill. That one hammered as well from Mary Morgan Formby. Formby two for two. Mary Morgan does a great job just getting up and timing every ball. She just hits it so hard every time. Through the middle that time. We'll send Kayla Matthews to the back line. Wow, what a tough angle from Coors. Cutting that one all the way down across the tape. And still able to find the gray line. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Just nobody over there, and she went cross court with it. Gregerson, and she stays perfect as well as she is now three for three. Those quick sets have seemed to be working for PBA. Yeah, we'll see if they turn to that a little bit more. As they need to make a move here down 14 to 6. Tampa will answer though. That was Natalie Perez again. Schrenger with seven, Perez with five, and Kors and Kowalski both with four kills. So again, a very well-rounded attack. Oh. 
Not able to find the back line. But it looks like a net violation called against the Spartans. Number 20, Tatiana Lyons making contact with the net. Canceling out that attack. And giving the point to PBA. Another point to the Sailfish as Kaylee Ammons goes up to block that one. Getting the pom-poms riled up here in the student section a little bit throughout the crowd. Yeah, she sent that hard-hitting ball right back down. Good work by her. A very good blocker in the middle. Free point over to Tampa again with the serve error. The fifth one of the match for PBA. 16 to 8. You got Revere serving, so it looks like you might get a little pop serve. That's exactly what you got. Touch on that attack. We get Abby Zilstra her second kill. Excuse me, her third kill. She serves. To put back to Rivera. And that connection has been there all match long. Natalie Perez, excuse me, not Rivera Perez. Natalie Perez with her sixth kill. Man, she just jumps so easy, Jordan, just sends it right down. It doesn't matter where. PBR yeah. doesn't get it a lot, up a lot of the time. Just effortless from Perez. And another block. Kowalski, looks like she got her hands on that one. Matthews unable to get it over. Yeah, that was right down. Grazed the other side of the net on the way back down. Nice read from Cummings. Not going for that serve. Great awareness by her. It was close, but... A little bit too far. Second service error for Spart for the Spartans. Makes it 18-10 the score. Tough set from the back row. Handled by Rivera. Excuse me, Ramirez. That one just pushed down by Dufresne. That's what Tampa does so well, those quick sets. Kind of a staple within their program. And it looked Very like they're out of rotation right there, Jordan. And she still just got up and put a whole hand on that. Yeah, just almost palming it down to the floor. Blocked out of play. That time Kowalski not quite able to turn those hands in and get it back inside the boundaries. That was a good re receive and pass by Lauren Cummings on that serve to set up a, that good offense by PBA. Jaden Otto, 17 assists. Kowalski again, able to find the spot in the Palm Beach Atlantic defense. Spartans Cracking the 20 point mark now, 22 11. And that's what tough is once you get PB out of rotation like that, they have some soft spots, and Spartans are expo exposing that a little bit more than usual today. Touch called on the block. Point to Dufresne and the Spartans again. And PB has Annabeth Stokes in, a 6'1 sophomore, getting some playing time today. Love to see it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if she can provide a little bit of a spark. Does some setting, it looks like, with Otto in. Stokes will do a little hitting, too. 
Yeah, it looks like she's a setter as well. I've seen in warm-ups a bunch. Maybe they'd also run a two-setter mm -hmm. th two setter rotation, get something different here. Oh, great serve by Kayla Matthews. Just barely over the net as Zilcher comes down line. Zilcher tries the other side of the court. And that time she'll get the kill. She's definitely somebody that Palm Beach Atlantic wants to get going. You can see there cross court, unable to be dug out by Rivera. Another error on the service line. Definitely something that PBA needs to clean up. That's number six. That's uncharacteristic, especially of Kayla Matthews, who's one of our great like low ball line drive servers that get over the net. She has such a good job of that. Those can definitely cause some problems for the opponent. But that time, Matthews unable to handle the recept the receive from Saput. And that brings the lead to double figures now, 23-13 the score. We'll take a quick break and be right back in set number two. is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Tampa within two points of taking a 2-0 lead. Saput serves. Now it is set point for the Spartans. Net violation called on PBA 24-13 the score. Breedenberg sets up Zilstra. Contact made at the net. And PBA will fight for at least another point. Man, when Saput serves for the Spartans, it always causes some problems for PBA. She's been done she's been doing a great job serving against the PBA today. Breedenberg up and over. Saput back set blocked. Nicely done by the sailfish as they continue to battle. They're going to need another big comeback like set number one. They probably don't want to keep putting themselves in this position against a team like Tampa. But here we are, 24-15. Up and over the tape. And Palm Beach Atlantic within inches of being down by two, but they stay alive. 24-16. The score as we were working on scoreboard malfunction here. PBA putting together three straight points to keep them alive. One of those, an ace from Breedenburg as she will look for another. Getting Tampa out of system a little bit. Perez just forced to send a free ball over. Ammons Nice dig from Tringer. Contact made 
with the net. We'll end this one as Tampa takes it 25-16 and a 2-0 lead. PBA tried to battle back a little bit, but couldn't come all the way back as Tampa now in command, up by two. Do you want Selfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them. It's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. The biggest message today is don't change. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Tampa Spartans taking the first two sets just like they did four days ago when these two teams last played. We'll see if PBA can fight back here on the ropes and what is their last match of the season here at home. I mean, if you look at a great stat, what I was like to look at, Jordan, is hitting percentage. Tampa is at 22% right now, almost 23, and PBA is just at 13%. 
So if they can get that up, hit inside the gray lines a little bit more, and clean it up on the perimeter, and not get down to such a big deficit early like they have been the last two sets, they can they can steal a set from a nationally ranked team, and that'd be huge going forward. That is definitely the key, getting out to a much faster start. You got to stop getting in these 7-2, seven, 7-3 seven, deficits early on, especially against the Spartans who, like we said, not just one of the better teams in the conference, but one of the better teams in the country. Setter Zoe Saput, Shorewood, Illinois native, will get things started. Ammons through the middle. That's a better start. I don't think it's the first time they've won the first point here. So we'll see if maybe they can get out to a 7-0 lead trade. We'll see. That'd be crazy. Lauren Cummings, our best server. Hopefully he can get us on a hot streak real quick. Tipped up and over from Matthews. And that was a good decision there. Hey, that's two points on two tips. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Matthews and Ammons, two of the better attackers on the Sailfish side. Responsible for those last two points, a rocket serve. Just not quite able to find the back line. Just a little too much. Coors will serve for Tampa. Overpass. And again, just not quite able to get in bounds. Those last two points have been very close, but a little bit too much on them. Zilcher tries again this time. She succeeds. Nice attack from Zilcher going right down the line. Six kills on the day. It's good to see she's starting to heat up here in these last few sets. Nice spot from the Spartans. Keep things tied up at three. That kill by Schrenger. Just pushing it through, down the line again. Claudia Rivera will serve. So put to Dufresne right in the middle. And point to the Spartans. Those quick sets, we've talked about them throughout the match. Very efficient for Tampa. Ammons tries to go with the tip. Somehow that one's saved, but that'll be four contacts. They started to receive Rivera a little bit better on those little pop serves that barely get over the net, so it's good to see that they're siding out quicker on her. Zilstra able to get it over. Nicely done by PBA to keep this point alive. And end up winning the point. Schrenger, too strong. I don't know, I don't know if PBA was gonna get that one back, but some they're, also there from the sailfish. Yeah, they're running all over the place. That was impressive. A much better start here in the third set. But a great hitter, Tess Schrenger, keeping this thing knotted up. Schrenger and Perez leading the way. Schrenger with 24 attacks, the highest for either side. Three point over to Palm Beach Atlantic. 
on the service error. Jaden Otto, one of three players with an ace for Palm Beach Atlantic. Looking to make it multiple aces. Formby does good on the second jump just to keep that one alive. And Kowalski has been very efficient for Tampa. Kowalski, just a freshman out of Northport. Coming out of Port Charlotte High School. That's right by my high school. Played them a couple times. Nice. Stranger, good effort on that dig, but hit the wood first. So PBA with the lead, first one to seven. That was great work by the PBA offense on that one, just rattling behind each and every hit to get that point. And Jaden Otto with a little bit of. A little bit of a strawberry there on her knee. Looks yeah, like. that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Looking for a bandage. Trainer will come out and make sure she can stay in the game. But PBA off to a much better start. We've talked about that coming into the set. They couldn't fall behind early like they have in the previous couple. And they haven't done, set, done that so far. In fact, they're in the lead up 7-6. Kayla Matthews getting the last kill. And she's playing her last game here in Rubin Arena, coming over as a grad student, grad transfer from Grand Canyon University. And she had two kills the last game, so obviously a much better performance for her as she's with nine, one away from double figures. Kowalski again, one of the really good athletes for the Spartans. Her and Perez, when they both jump, it kind of looks like they get a couple feet off the ground, they hang there for a couple seconds, and they just hammer it. Right. They just elevate up. Kill by Callie Kors. Tampa takes the lead back, 8-7. Dufresne will serve now. Those tough two points from Spartans right there. Make it three as they just put that right in the middle of our zone. And again, not the kind of point that you can afford to give up. You have to make a team like Tampa work for their points. And when they're getting freebies like that, it's not a great recipe for success. Gregerson sent back by Coors. We've seen Gregerson on the blocking side of the lot. She's one of the better blockers for Palm Beach Atlantic. In fact, she leads the team with 78. And that's seventh in the conference, but that time getting a little bit of her own medicine there. <laughs> Tough angle on that Spartan attack. That one looked like it hit the line, too. Mm -hmm. Just able to sneak it in. Callie Kors finding her rhythm. Nicely done there by Formby. She read the defense there, saw where they were coming from, and decided to take a little bit off of it. Able to go right through the block and into that middle of the zone where there were no Spartans. Friedenberg serves for Palm Beach Atlantic down by three. And there's that elevation that we've talked about from Kowalski. Very explosive. Another explosive athlete there. You can see Perez coming in. Dude, and she's only 5'9". You would think she's like six foot two yeah, with the way she's jumping out of this gym. She's getting her eyes above the net. She'll come out for a breather. Perez will come in and They'll keep rotating, very effective for the Spartans lineup. 
Contact again. Zilstra credited with the kill. Lauren Cummings now to serve with only a three point deficit. Good dig from Schranger. The attack able to get through the block. Another look at that replay. Great back set and then just went right through the hands of Zilstra and Ammons on that one. Kors delivers. Zilstra tries again on the attack. Matthews will set it over to Zilstra again. Tampa now opening up a little bit of a lead up by five. That five point deficit, enough for a timeout. We'll take it with them here. 14-9 the score in set number three. Tampa looking to get the sweep in Ruben Arena. Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Tampa Spartans in control, up 14-9, already up 2-0 in sets. They come in in their last five matches, 4-1, and one, beating Florida Southern, Rollins, Embry-Riddle, Palm Beach Atlantic, and losing to Barry. Nice kill from Zilstra. Offense in rhythm, and Abby Zilstra takes advantage of it. Timeout paid off with that. Just great timing and, like you said, an elevation by Zelstra just to get it up and pound it through. Now she's serving with only a four-point deficit. A couple points now for PBA. They're looking to avoid losing six in a row. They've had a, couple, a tough stretch losing to Nova, Florida Tech, St. Leo, Tampa, and then Eckerd last night. There's Schrenger again. Seems like every time PBA's gone on a little bit of a run or got some momentum, Schrenger's been right there to end it. And she just knows where to find our soft spots, too. Doing things in a variety of ways. Claudia Rivera serving. There, there you have that short serve again, handled by Cummings. Wow, nice dig from Rivera. Kicks that in. Perez was trying to get that up and over, but... Couldn't quite reach it. Good hustle by both squads. And good eyes by Jaden Otto just to watch that spin come off that net like that, like we're seeing in the replay, just to be patient. Good work by that PBA offense. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the soccer volleyball combination trying to get it off the feet, just not able to get it on goal. My goodness, Natalie Perez absolutely floating on that near side. And Seyput went cross court with that back set. That was ridiculous. They've been connecting all game long, all match long, and they'll both come out for their substitutions, who are very good as well. Emily No and Kowalski. Overpass. Another opportunity for Tampa. Contact called. PBA down by three. The 
quick set to Dufresne. Palm Beach Atlanta can't handle. Dufresne with her fourth kill. Excuse me, third kill. Six away from breaking the 200 mark on the season for her. Miscommunication just pushed over by PBA. Kowalski again trying to cut down that angle. Looks like she crossed the line on that back row attack. Sending the point over to Tampa. Man, that would have been a good one too. Gregerson pushes it over, cross court, Tampa handles. Really good rally again, Zilcher from the back row, a little bit short. Nice back and forth from both teams though, neither team backing down as Tampa able to separate themselves a little bit, up by six. And Abby's right there hitting the top of the net on those ones that are just coming short, too. That's what's so frustrating from her perspective. Blocked by Dufresne. Double contact. And Tampa now breaking through the 20s. Harper Stokes to step in for Gregerson. Dufresne, wow. No question about that one. That one was, had zero chance of being dug out. And Coach Doug will take a timeout. Look at that kill, just absolutely clobbered by Dufresne. We'll stay here actually right now as we have a, we'll go over the schedules for these teams coming up. PBA just two more matches left on the year, both away. As we said, this is the last match here in Rubin Arena. They're traveling to Eckerd on November 9th, and then the day after on Thursday, going to Florida Southern. So those are their two matches left. For Tampa, they have a three-match home stretch as they end the season against Barry again, which would be another fun, fun match, I'm sure. Last one yesterday was a back and forth crazy game. Going five sets, two of the best teams, two top ten teams in the country. And they play Barry on Friday the 11th. And then St. Leo and Florida Tech on consecutive days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ending their schedule with those three teams. And I'm sure Tampa will be continuing on to the national tournament. They've had a very good season, 23-3. and Their record, 13-3 and in the conference. So their season will continue after SSC play concludes next week. As for PBA, it looks like there will, theirs will be over here as they have been sitting in eighth place in the standings. Top five or six teams in the SSC will probably move on from the region into the national tournament. But PBA not looking like they can make that run happen. Man, that's too bad. Just a few games off the mark. And this, these two teams were... Met in the national tournament last year, Tampa ultimately sending home Palm Beach Atlantic in the first round of the tournament. Tampa would go on to win it as they are the defending national champions. And that was just a great, great offense right there by PBA and just got sent immediately back down by that wall of blockers that the Spartans are putting up right now. They've been covering all the spots all match long. Formby tries to find one. Contacts called. Caleb Matthews will serve for Palm Beach Atlantic. Miscommunication and sloppy receiving from PBA.
Zilstra times it up. Nice hit out of the back. That one climbs back over. Not able to get across the net. Palm Beach Atlantic staying alive here. That was a 6-1 scoring run for Tampa. <laughs> Tough serve from Breedenburg. Freshman libero. That was a great serve. Barely got over the net, and they were obviously not able to get that one back. Hopefully starting a quick rally for the Sailfish as they try to get a few more points here. It's now or never. Kowalski again, Breedenburg. Nice play there. Overpass, Ammons dumps it back over. Jana Breedenburg providing a little spark. PBA trying to fight back down by six. Ammons not letting that one back over the net. Dana Breedenburg continues the back line success. It's exactly what PBA needed if they wanted any chance of coming back. And the freshman from Chanhassen is delivering. But that run will come to an end just off the tape. And PBA now down to their final point. Tampa up 24-18. Zoe Saput looking to end it. And she's been causing all sorts of trouble for PBA all day long. Nice dig from Saput, but second touch not able to get up as PBA staying alive. Nice little touch from Zostra on that outside just to keep them keep them unbalanced. Zostra again tries. That one sent back. And Callie Kors will end this match with Tampa getting the sweep here. 24-26, 16-25, 19-25. PBA not able to steal one here. As like I said, Palm Beach Atlantic will be back in action on Wednesday at Eckerd. And Tampa back in action on Friday against Barry. That was our last match here of the volleyball season. Trey, it was a fun season. Obviously not quite the results that PBA was looking for. They played hard and took a lot of good teams pretty far. Fighting against Barry was one of the highlights. Uh, Barry, obviously a top team in the country. Took them to five sets. Uh, but what are your last thoughts on the season as we head into basketball now? I mean, yeah, it was a great season, like you said, all around. Like, that Barry game was amazing to watch as I was calling that one with Hunter Lizza. It just You see a lot of good progress over the season as they've really gelled as a team. All the freshmen have promising futures here as they've been dominant all around, especially with Abby Zilstra being our leading killer. And it's just to see the seniors go, but hopefully they can produce something even bigger and better next year, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. Those three seniors, Kayla Matthews, Angelisha Curbello, and Grace Talbert, all playing their last games here in Rubin Arena. Everybody else on the roster coming back, whether it be for a COVID year or they have remaining eligibility. So obviously sad to see those three go. Um, but excited for what the future holds. As for us, uh, my name is Jordan Litwiller, Trey Rooks here. Uh, we'll see you back here either next season or during basketball when things kick up here within the next couple of days. But thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us here on the Sailfish Sports Network. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.